So the way that we can actually explain seafloor spreading, because we can't live for millions of years to witness, witness it firsthand, is through the concept of paleomagnetism, which means that certain minerals in rocks lock in a record of the direction and intensity of the magnetic field from which they form. Example of the, a rock at the ocean floor that does this is basalt, which is forming right there at the mid-ocean ridge. Basalt is an igneous rock, and it records uh, traces of the magnetic signature um, from when it first crystallized. So looking at this figure here, this will be our first period of time. We have this magma rising up to the surface. We're going to say that our magnetic north is um, positive currently, so we're getting positive values. Magnetic north is the same as true north, sort of like the conditions we have today. So we'll get positive values on each side of this mid-ocean ridge here. At the second period of time, these are our original magma rocks. They've cooled and they've been spread out through the process of seafloor spreading. And what we're looking at here is reverses in the magnetic polarity of these rocks. So we'll say we had a magnetic reversal at this time. And so all of the rocks forming right now are going to form negative signatures. So that's the idea that um, we've reversed our magnetic polarity over time. In this third figure here, we'll look. Again, positive. This was our original rock. It's now spread all the way out to the ends here. This was our second set. We'll say that the Earth underwent a second polarity reversal. And so we're back to positive values here. So if you go from left to right, positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. So those are our magnetic values. So that's just recorded in the rocks at a given time as the seafloor is spreading. So we can actually go down and take samples of rocks in different areas and see that they have different magnetic signatures in the ocean floor. All right, so for this lab, we're going to need this big metal pan full of sand. I'll explain more about that in just a second. Half meter stick, an iPad, and our LabQuest device. And our LabQuest device is going to be hooked up to magnetic field probe. I can go ahead and just put it at the 0.3 setting so you don't forget. Um, so 0.3 setting right away, we're going to use our magnetic field probe for the procedure of this lab. Okay, so just a little bit of background information for this lab procedure. So, like I said, you need to grab one of these pans full of sand. What's inside of that is exactly what we have right here. So, manila folder, and inside of that folder, I have six magnets. Positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. And so what that's actually recording is the magnetic signature of the seafloor at different points. So at time one time two, time three, if this is our middle right here, this is the middle. So this is a magnetic signature of the seafloor. So it should be down like this and then covered in sand. So one thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is put a pencil down where my north is. So I'll put a pencil down. The reason I know that that was north, I actually have them labeled on here. So this is going to be your north end of the bucket. Before we run anything, let's set up our LabQuest device. So the mode for this experiment is going to be events with entry. Events with entry. Our name is going to be distance. So what we're measuring is distance here. And the unit for that is going to be in centimeters. Once this is set up, you're going to want to make sure to take your magnetic probe. I would actually take a little bit of time here to find where your magnets are. And you can do that by kind of searching around here and finding the strongest 
signal and working across because remember the magnets are oriented horizontally. Looks like it's weaker down here and it should be somewhere around the middle. Looks about right right here. When you find that, make sure to zero out. your lab quest. And then the final thing you're going to want to do once you kind of have an idea of the area, you're going to want to put down a meter stick. It doesn't really matter where you put down the meter stick. I'll explain that in a second as we go through the data. I'm going to put mine so that it's right here at 10 centimeters. Looks like it goes to 34 centimeters. So the only thing that's going to change for each person, how you do it, you could have it down at zero here and go across, but it's kind of hard to hold up. So I'm going to put it at 10. And you just need to make sure that if you're at 10, you're measuring 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that'll make more sense in just a second here. So it looks like I'm ready to run the experiment. Again, make sure you know kind of where the magnets are oriented horizontally. So I place my meter stick just a little bit above where my magnets are, where I was getting the strongest magnetic readings. Once you're ready and you've got your lab quest set up, I'm just going to hit play. And I'm going to start here at 10. It's going to give me a magnetic field reading. I'll hit keep. And again, make sure your distance is wherever you're at on the meter stick. So I'm at 10 centimeters. You know, if you were if you started at zero over here, that's obviously going to be different, but I'm at 10 centimeters. I'll move it over here to 11. And we're going to keep one point for every centimeter as we go all the way across. So it looks like I'm going to have about 24 or 25 points. And that should be the same for you. So the next one, 11 centimeters. Move a little bit over, look at 12. And so we're gonna keep doing this, 13. Fourteen. And so on. So you're gonna do this all the way till you get to the other side. So it looks like I'll probably be ending over here at 34. Okay, so I ran my 24 points, 24, 25 points. It ended up looking something like this. So your data should look somewhat similar. I'm gonna connect this to graphical analysis on my iPad right away. All right, again, you can double tap the screen here. It just fits your data to one page really nice like that. If you go into the graph settings here, graph tools, graph options, our appearance is going to be both points and lines. All right. Take a screenshot of this. This is the data that's going to go on that first page of your lab write-up. This is all you need, all you should need uh, as far as procedure in order to answer all of the questions for the lab right up here. As you're going through the lab worksheet, make sure too to label everything that is telling you to label. So your screenshot is gonna go above and you're gonna label uh, a bunch of different things on your graph based off of what I ask here. I think that's all you should need to answer all the questions on this lab. So again, uh, make sure to clean up your setup and then let me know if you have any questions related to the lab or any of the lab procedures. This was our seafloor spreading lab.